Alrighty, so welcome to part two of this tutorial. Uh, today we're going to actually start modeling this thing. So let's just jump into it. Uh, first off, we're going to do the chassis rails. Uh, this is the best photo reference I could find. So I started off with just a cube, stretching it out and converting it to edit poly. And just working in the side view here, just aligning it to the reference images that we set up in the first tutorial. And then just using the chamfer tool on the edges here to just add some more um, vertices so we can get uh, more of that curved shape that you can see here in the reference image. And he's just manipulating the vertices with the move tool, which is W. And once we're happy with that rough shape, we're gonna select the outside face and the inside face of the chassis rail and then use the, um, just like the whole perimeter edge and use the chamfer tool again, just to put a bit of a curve on that edge. And then just using the vertice manipulation method just to line everything back up. Also looking in a top-down view, I'm uh, placing the center supports. Now these, uh, I decided to do these as separate elements so that I can easily slide them back and forward to get them in the correct spot uh, later on. And I think later on I'll, I'll join them all as one big polygon or one big piece of geometry. So again, just using, um, selecting the edge, the end faces of that rectangle and extruding them out and then selecting the vertices and using the scale tool to give that sort of what would you call that that sort of tapered look which is the sort of weld mark you can see in the reference here so the the second support further down is pretty much the same process um, you can just copy the first one and tweak the verts you notice here i've I've tried to maintain the pivot point in the along the center axis. Here's the th the third of these support rails, just another clone, and then tweak the vertices to make it fit the uh, reference material and then selecting this lower face and trying to extrude out that uh, sort of box box support i was trying to just extrude um, the whole face and then i i think i in, in the end just used the slice plane to add in some more rows of um, vertices that gave me some sort of double up polygon thing so I'll have to come back and check that there's not some polygons sitting on top of each other so that's sort of the rough placement of those three chassis rails and lastly I'm going to work on these little sort of box supports with that 45 degree and they're kind of like a box tube steel so simply just select the lower face and use the extrude could also use the inset tool to do that and then just lining everything up. Again, this detail is probably not going to be seen when we render it, but I plan on having the um, suspension and everything working. And when we come to animate this, I want it to drive over the top of the camera to sort of show off all this sort of undercarriage work that we're, we're putting in. Yeah, so once I've got one of these things done, I can use the mirror tool. Um, I was just playing around with trying to figure out the best combination of move manipulators and pivot points to get this to flip across. I, I think in the end, yeah, it was just a matter of making the pivot in the center of the origin and then using the mirror tool. So I think the other thing I've noticed was there is this um, like cylinder tube going across the, the front here. 
I couldn't see this in any other um, models. I'm not sure if this was something um, that they've put in just for the the plastic model, but you can always take it out later if it's not needed. So this is the um, front and rear diff for the for the vehicle, and this was it's proved to be quite a complicated thing to build. Uh, it took a lot longer than I anticipated. Um, it could, it's good that we've got quite a few different angles of it, um, but they're not the same, the front and the rear. They're, they're both quite different um, and sort of wrapping your mind around the reference pictures to work out which is which was a bit of a challenge. But you can see here I started with a cone and it's uh i think it's yeah it's eight eight sided cone just to start off basic and three uh subdivisions down the side and then convert the cone to an edit poly and moving the vertices around to get that rough sort of shape and then i was just experimenting here with extruding out the one of the side faces of this this sort of center cone shape to make the support that sits on that cylinder. So using the slice plane again to cut in some more vertices to give me more detail. And now I'm working on the sort of axle hub end of the diff. Uh, this is a simple cylinder and then chamfering the corners and then extruding out those faces. I was pretty happy with the result this gave. And then it was just a matter of joining these two together. Now I want to put these sort of ridges along the, the diff hub and did that just again by selecting the edges, chamfering, and then extruding. So again on this reference you can see there's these sort of grooves along that flat edge of the diff. Um, and I was experimenting with different ways of doing these, whether I create a polygon and attach it. And I think in the end I just chose to extrude and cut in geometry with the slice plane. Yeah, so you can see here I'm just cutting in more rows of uh, vertices that I can then use to extrude. This is about the detail I want to work in. Um, it's probably towards putting too much detail in at this early rough in stage. I could have I could have worked a bit lighter on the polygons and it would have been easier to edit. But I got a bit carried away with the detail on certain parts, which just ends up taking longer to model than I expected. So now we're just attaching the uh, that sort of shaft shape to the to the sort of cone shape, and before I do that, I'm just cutting in these ridges into the shaft or the cone, I should say. And ideally, I want these uh, more the topology to flow all the way through this shape. This is a component that we might put a mesh smooth on later. So we want the 
we want to keep everything to quads and not have any triangles or um, any crazy shapes going on which, which call, could cause problems when we put a mesh smooth on. Uh, so now I'm switching focus to the, the end side. Um, you can see I just started with the cylinder cutting in that geometry. Again, I could have done that uh, quicker with just one cylinder but and not have to cut in the geometry. And you can see here I've, I'm sort of stretching out that sort of end group of vertices of the shaft thing to sort of flange it out. I've really sped it up here because this was uh, quite a long recording of uh, attaching this all. But you can see here that it's just a matter of using the target weld tool to attach these two shapes together, vertice by vertice, and often uh, using the bridge tool to create faces between two edges. And you can see here I've got some five-sided edges happening, so or some triangles. So it was a bit of time trying to figure out what the cause of this was and sort of chasing it all the way around um, both sides of the of the diff um, trying to figure out if where this had been created and um, how to solve it so yeah it's worth putting in it's worth not getting any of these uh, three-sided edges or th faces, uh, three and five sided faces. We want everything to be a, a big quads, four sided faces. And I think to solve this, I ended up just deleting one side of it, copying it across, and flipping it, and then rewelding it all together. Uh, if you want to duplicate that shape out, uh, whenever you've got a group of faces selected, you can just hold down shift and use the move command and you'll pull them off and you can pull them off as a separate element or keep them within the element that you're working on. And then you can see here I'm just adjusting those chassis rails. To isolate the diff by itself I'm just using the isolate selected button uh, that just temporarily hides everything else in the viewport to give you an easier work area and now I'm just tweaking the placement pushing in these inside faces and I'm going to add the detail to this end face so one thing um, I noticed is that center hub's got to be smaller and then all these sort of uh, every second edge I'm going to select and chamfer to add in some detail and then push them back uh, to make them sort of uh, look like spokes. You can see this using the chamfer tool here has created some triangles on that end sphere, uh, that end cylinder, but I'm not too worried about that right now. We'll come back and clean that up. I was really happy with that sort of spoke look that it's given to the end of this uh, diff case. It has added in a, a fair bit of uh, polygons and in vertices, but uh, we'll come back and clean this up a bit later. So just selecting those end triangles and then using the grow tool to select the entire end of that cylinder, uh, then deleting the faces using the edge select tool after we've extruded them and then using the cap command that just gives us one face to finish off that end of that sphere and clean up all those little unnecessary faces that we had in there. So using the smoothing group you can I think we used 70. You can sort of change the way that that's that's rendered and sort of unify all the edges to be um, that sort of smooth yet hard-edged look. And then finally I'm just, I think I'm just tumbling around all the different viewports and just 
neatening everything up, just making sure there's no vertices on top of vertices or any faces on top of each other that we can delete. So here we are just putting some um, cylinders with eight sides um, as little uh, bolt heads, just duplicating and, and holding shift and rotating to make some clones of them. Not too stressed about the accuracy of the placement of them. Again, we're not making a, a lifelike model. We're just trying to make something that looks as close as possible. It's not like this is going to go into manufacture or anything. So with all them selected, you can see that's already giving it some cool detail, just from some simple cylinders. I'm pretty happy with how that's how that's turned out. Now we've got the the nice um, flow to all these, these 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 three components: the square edge, the cone, and the cylinder drive shaft. So here I noticed that the underside of that square edge doesn't have those ribs going through it. So I've just deleted them and now I'm going to put a flat flat edge on that. So just selecting the edges and extruding them up, welding those vertices together using the target weld tool. And then selecting all the vertices on that edge and either using the uh, weld weld tool or just aligning them using the XYZ. And then using the bridge tool here to fill everything in. And then selecting the underside, just pushing that up to give it uh, a bit more depth. So flipping around to the, the back side of this, the sort of narrow end of this cylinder, of this cone, I decided uh, the easiest way was to chop it off and uh, build a clean shape. So first off, all these ribs on the diff housing sort of uh, come to a sort of octagon shape. So I think I ended up creating about seven, seven or eight of these. And just, just, pay, just moving them around so they're in line with the, the ribs of the, the outer casting of the diff. And just again, using the edge selection tool, using either the ring or, or a loop to select a whole row and then chamfering them and extruding them to sort of build up that detail and then just pulling the faces out. So there's a lot of flipping back to the reference images in building this. Um, I've got links to these on my website if you check the link below. But also I'd recommend checking out the East Coast Armoury Facebook page So then once those, I'm happy with the placement of those cylinders, I just deleted the back faces and selected the front faces and then scaled them down to give them that sort of tapered look. And then just using the target weld and extrude tools here to attach everything to the existing part of the diff. And then here I'm using the bridge tool to build up some geometry between each of these um, cylinders. And then using the cut tool here, I'm just cutting in some more geometry in line with the uh, geometry of the diff. So roughly moving everything together and then target welding it together. 
then I realized that this row of um, this ridge didn't exist. So it's just deleting it out, selecting the edges, and then I was going to try to weld it together, but it wasn't quite working for me. So I ended up just using the target weld tool and just stitching each one together after I sort of pushed them closer together. Again, this is why you want to work as low poly as possible because um, the more detail you put in, the longer things like this take to fix later on. So just trying to solve the problem with triangles uh, here. So just cutting in more detail and then if the bridge tool isn't quite giving the result we're after, just selecting the edge, holding shift and using the move manipulator to pull a, an edge or pull a face off an edge and then target welding that together. So here we're just slicing more detail into those faces. Now we've almost completed that cap. It's just a matter of filling in all those other faces. And I've just really sped things up here. Uh, this, this final step, I was just going around and making sure that all the geometry flowed nicely, cleaning up any little triangles making sure everything's quads, making sure in the side and front views that vertices that are almost aligned um, are aligned to just make every, all those hard edges look more machined rather than um, have anything that's too messy and just doing any other final little tweaks, just cleaning up um, any unjoined edges it's a good idea to select all the vertices and just use the weld tool with a really low tolerance of say 0.01 that'll weld any vertices on top of each other and I did have some problem here trying to solve what had happened to that uh, triangle in the corner there but I ended up finding it in the end so it's just something to keep in mind as you're modeling model as low poly as possible and clean up any triangles or five-sided faces as you go along. So I think this is a good spot to uh, wrap up this video. I'll go ahead and model the rear diff off camera. Uh, it's a very similar shape to this one um, and I'll be using the exact same techniques. I'll probably be able to do it a lot faster since I've learnt from modeling this one. So next up I think we're going to model the suspension, the springs and the control arms and maybe even the wheel hubs. The good thing with this component is we only need to model one of them and then we can just duplicate it out for all four wheels. So this uh, should be quite fun to build and we might even rig it up uh, so we can play around with doing some rigging. So check out the links below in the description for uh, the reference images I've used in this video. And if you've got any comments or suggestions just leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to everyone. And I uh, will see you in the next one.